Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about cutting geometry in Rhino. Now this is a critical component of modeling geometry in Rhino is being able to manipulate and cut surfaces and the geometry that you're creating within the tool. Rhino makes this pretty complicated because there's a lot of tools and functionality to do different versions of cutting and splitting within the Rhino interface. This is why I was inspired to do this video and also make it easier to understand when to use each one of these specific tools. And to break that down in really easy terms, we'll start with curves and surfaces, go to solids, and then more some of these more specialty cutting tools. The first thing that we will go over is trim. Now this is one of my favorite commands within Rhino, and it's very versatile and flexible with how you can use trim. First, let's talk about what this tool does. So if I create a curve, and let's say I create another curve, so I just did a copy and paste. I can click select that curve and do Command T. I am on Mac. You can also type in trim and then select that curve. I have two curves, so I had to select twice. I'm gonna actually delete one of those curves. And you'll see that whatever is in that bounding box is what it will trim. If I have similar geometry and I do type in trim or do command trim and select outside that selection, it will delete everything. You can also trim things with a line. So I'll just type in line and let's say I have a line here and I can do command T and it will trim everything in that region. That's the basics of trim. You can also, once you've created that geometry, I can click hold, drag it to a certain point and then join that geometry by just typing in join. One of the things that I really like about trim is let's say I have a surface. So I'll type in planar surface here. I could also have just started with the surface. I'll come here and create a curve. And if I do command T, I can then cut into that surface. So let's jump over to the 3D view. And you can see here that I've now cut into the surface. What's also cool about this is let's say I have 3D geometry. I can go into the 3D geometry and in my side view, I can create geometry, select that curve, do control T and start clicking within that bounding box and it will start trimming away at whatever is intersecting. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind, which is the, where this curve is does actually matter. On this side, I did command T or if I had it, let's say I had it in the middle, it might behave differently. So just keep that in mind. This is still selecting it, so that's actually fine. But sometimes you'll get some errors if it's not in the right location. You can also do this in 3D. No, you have to click within the geometry because again, if I select outside the geometry, it's going to, which maybe that is what you wanna do, it will delete everything that's outside that geometry. So just keep that in mind. Both the placement of the curve, I like to just have it way off to the side. And to make it easier too, I usually have this as a shaded too. Now we'll get to how to cut openings for windows and doors. You can use this technique, but we'll see in a little bit that you can also use wire cutter because what happens is, is when I trim this geometry this way, you'll notice that it's creating a hole. Now you might want that gap or you might not want that gap. So, you know, typically if I were to close this gap, I could go here and I could extrude this curve and then click hold and then close it. And I would now have to select each one of those surfaces and then join it with this geometry to make it all cohesive. There's another tool called Wirecut that actually helps get around that issue. So let's try to select this and we will type in Wirecut and select object. And this will project that out, press enter. And then you see that now for Wirecut that this is a solid geometry. So that's really nice. That is a nice functionality there for wire cut. You can do the same for windows or any other types of openings that you have. Once you have that geometry, you can always control shift or I'm in command shift on a Mac, and then you can select that geometry and manipulate it however you like with that type of moving around. So that is trim. I know I jumped right to wire cut so because I was so excited about that specific functionality, but let's go back to some additional uh, one of these tools. So let's say I have a surface here. I can type in split and you'll notice I would have to have a cutting object. So in this case, I don't have a cutting object. So I'll make a, let's try this split. We'll get to split face in a second, but first let's do split. Select objects to split and then select cutting objects. And you'll notice that I've now split that object. 
and then I can select that and extrude. We'll get to that next. There's also another command which is called split face. Now, for a lot of you know that I really like the command shift selection of faces. What's nice about the split face is let's say you have that. So we'll go for split face. For split face, I often like to go into the top view and just use the top view here and then I'll press enter and press OK. Notice how I'll do this one more time and then I can move the geometry. But notice how when I typed in split face, you need to select the faces. So that's another again, control shift. I have this faces selected, so I'll do space. I'm going to do start of spine, which is click and then click again. I have to click outside the bounds. So I'll do a version where I redo that command. Oh, now I'm selecting the thing. I can't just go like this. It's not going to do what I need it to do. So I can't just create a split face that's halfway in between. I have to select that split face. And I'm going to select here to here. And you'll notice that it then selects that face. Now, when I do command shift, I can select that. So again, just another way that you can manipulate and change geometry. And then from there, I can do all sorts of crazy stuff from there. Okay. So that is the split face. I really like that, especially when you're doing like overall massing. So let's say I was just doing a quick massing study. I can, you know, select this geometry, move it in, maybe move it down. But then let's say I want to split this. Now I could control shift, extrude that back and then extrude it forward and it would split my face. But there are circumstances where I might not want to do that. And that's where the split face comes in. So you can either do it more intuitively by doing like a push pull or do it this way. And again, I'm just going to go into like the 2D view to be able to do that. And there we go. That's the split face. Next up, we have the Boolean operations. And then we'll go over to some of the more specialty cuts. So Boolean operations is more so if you want to use geometry to cut away other geometry. And when I introduce this, so this is solid geometry working with solids. I like to really make simple geometry so that it's really clear what is cutting what and everything is makes sense. So my recommendation here is to do Boolean type in Boolean difference. I'm going to, and it will give you instructions, select surfaces to subtract from select sur surfaces to subtract with, and then it will subtract that. So that's the Boolean difference. We also have a Boolean split. So before we could use the curve to split. That didn't work. So if we needed to split this, we could use the surface trim and then do that. But let's say we just wanted to split this object in half. We can then do a Boolean split and I will, and then you could explode it like that. That's the Boolean split. Now let's get to some of these more precise cuts. I did jump ahead. I couldn't help myself and I did do the wire cut. So I think this is a really nice way to create windows. Again, there's just so many ways to do one thing in Rhino that often it's hard to, it just depends on the context in which you're modeling when you would want to use a specific tool. This is great if in the context of creating doors and windows where you want that closed geometry after you've made the split. So let's try out wire cut again and I'll select the object and then we'll go all the way through and it shows you how it's going to split that object. And then we can do a command shift, select that edge and then we've cut away at the shape. This has a little bit more control Let's try one more time to do the control T somewhere just to see the difference. So if I was to do control T notice for that, I'm selecting everything within its path, a little bit less control, but this could be really useful and quick depending on the context. So that's wire cut again, we're going to do, let's do section and contour. So contour, we can select an object, click once, click twice, and we'll press done and it will contour that object. What I like about this is then you could extrude that and you'll notice for things that are open, it won't shut because it was not a closed curve, but for those other ones, it's created a plane based on that geometry. So that's helpful if you're doing laser cutting or if you want to change how you're thinking about your model. So maybe you go from, I'm really thinking about this in floors and now I'm going to go back and create some separated facade from those floors. So I've kind of created this overall geometry and then I want to do a series of floors. There's also section. So if you want to go through and 
do a section. We'll click once, click twice. Here, let's actually do it in the right view. So select objects to section. I'm, I'm holding shift to select this, boom. And then you'll notice that it makes a slice wherever I sliced it. So sometimes you need a section cut. That's another way that you can cut that geometry. And there's a lot that you can do with this. There's, there's more to talk to about this, but that just a quick introduction. This is just a view. So you're not actually, this is just a cutting where you would want that. So this would be more for like a visualization. If I want to do a rendered perspective view, then I would use that tool for that. Note that if you go to settings here, there is, or if I, yeah, I can do a lot of customization around how that those settings show up. So just, just something to keep in mind there that you can change the settings for the, for the section, the contour, sorry, the section plane. So I think those are the main things when it comes to splitting, cutting everything in between. I'll share this resource below so that it's easy to reference these different words that I've covered. Thank you very much.